Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Doug, I work at N24. We're a ticket and gig listing website based here in Bristol and we use Beanstalk and Supervisor to do a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to tell you about that. Beanstalk is a job queue. It holds things in a list for you and hands them out to things on demand. You could use a database for this, but Beanstalk's got a bunch of really nice features that make it a lot better than just shoving this in a MySQL table. So a job is just a blob of data. You can put string, binary, YAML, if you love that YAML. Uh, we use JSON. So we have the name of a job and some parameters. We use it like a GET request or something like that. Beanstalk stores them in tubes. They're like tables, but they're created on demand. You insert into a tube, and it appears for you. And when there's nothing in it, it goes away. Um, it logs things, binary logging on the disk. So if the server blows up, it's all kept around when you reboot it. And you can use it like memcache, where you connect to a bunch of them, and it just works out which one to use. So here's a brief example of what we do with it. So I'm using the Fiendstalk library here. It's a nice little, very stable PHP library for connecting to the stuff. So when you boot it up, there's a default tube hanging around. Um, I'm saying connect to PHP Southwest tube. Beanstalk creates it for me. And I decided to put some data in the tube. So I've put a very simple job, count the elephants. Uh, Beanstalk has stored it there. I've now switched, so I'm using, there I'm using use, which is Beanstalk's command for put things in tubes. And then I'm using watch, which is Beanstalk's get things back out of the tube command. So I've asked to reserve a job. Um, reserve's a blocking call. So if there's nothing in the tube, Beanstalk will just keep you hanging on. So you can start up one PHP process and just leave it running for hours. Ours are running all the time, 24-7, weeks of uptime, just waiting for stuff to come in. The moment something's in the tube, Beanstalk hands it off to the consumer who can do the job. So let's say we've counted the elephants. We just ask it to delete. because We've done it. No one else needs to do it. If we didn't want to delete it, we could just say, like, take it back. Beanstalk will hand it off to someone else to repeat the job. If it went wrong, turns out we can't count elephants. We have this sort of shadow tube. It gets a bit, my analogy's bad because I've just buried an elephant in the very <laughs> tube. <laughs> well, we'll get him, uh, it's fine, we'll get him back. Uh, if your job throws an exception, or you, uh, so you go into a very rarely used code path and you get a fatal error, or the network's down, or the database is down, you can't do the job. You tell Beanstalk to bury it, and it puts it in this sort of second version of the tube. Stuff in the buried tube is not handed out to other things until you look at it. So you can go in an admin tool, you can look at your logs, find out why it broke, and then when you're ready, you kick the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> I really should have chosen a, a non-animal. I'm very sorry. Um, you kick the elephant back into the ready tube, uh, and it's there for our consumer to pick up again and handle it. We use it for image processing. We have lots of images uploaded onto our website, um, 20 or 30 a day from staff in the office. We crop them, we scale them to multiple sizes. We uh, do face detection on them, so we can do auto cropping on other things, and we upload them to S3 and a backup to Azure. That takes a long time, like not a huge amount of time, but 30 seconds per image, more if it's a larger one. And you don't want to block up Apache or a browser thread just waiting whilst you're doing that in the background. So once we've uploaded the image, we just hand back a thing saying it's in the tube, Beanstalk will handle it, and the user just gets a nice progress bar. We use it to distribute tasks across our infrastructure. So we have loads of old admin systems that do horrible things to old database tables, NAF legacy stuff, and loads of nice new things that need to listen to these changes. So all we do is we have something that watches the database, finds changes that the old systems have put in, puts something in a Beanstalk tube, and then our workers go and tell our new things, so our API data store, our caching system, our search server, they say, admin system written in 1999 by the founder has just changed this table, but you need to listen. 2015 code. We use it to send emails. We had an email script. We don't actually spam people. Like People sign up to our service legitimately. They ask for this stuff. <laughs> uh, it ran for eight hours overnight. We send nearly two million emails a week. Uh, and eight hours on a single PHP script, if it bombs out in the middle, you don't, you don't really like that. So we've changed it. So we have one simple script that puts thousands of jobs in a queue, each one saying send the newsletter to this user and this user and this user. And then we have workers pick that up. So we've got cheap multi-threading on our emails. So we have 10 email workers. They pump out 10 emails at a time. It and goes 10 times faster. PHP's not great at doing this stuff out of the box. You don't want to be have 10 terminals open, each with PHP and then your command line script on it. The moment you turn your computer to sleep, then all your connections get booted. 
So we use supervisor or supervisor D to sort this out. The creepy octopus is their logo. It's not my choice. Uh, supervisor starts things. When it starts up, it, it configs them for you. It restarts things if they crash or the exit. It stops them when you ask it to, which is really useful when stuff goes wrong. And it captures all the standard output from these things and leaves it available for you. Um, and it's really easy to set up. It's got this simple text config file. So I've defined two workers there. So I've got 10 of these things called my worker. I just give it the command it wants to run. It doesn't have to be PHP. You can run absolutely anything. And I've got 10 of those running. And I've just got one of this other script. It's got this really nice little command line tool called supervisor CTL. So when I run that, it tells me the things that are running. That's one of our actual boxes. And I can say, stop all the workers, start all the workers. Or if I say tail, I get this little rhyme from the Jungle Book about elephants. Um, it's not actually what they print out, but I didn't want to divulge our secrets. Uh, I tend not to let the workers print to the standard output. They log what they're actually doing to their own file. And if PHP blows up and I get notices, oh, yeah, that's the stuff I want to see, that's standard output. So usually it should be empty. <coughs> PHP isn't ideal for long running scripts like this. This is our major problem with it. MySQL server has gone away. If you have a MySQL connection open for eight hours and don't do anything with it, MySQL boots you off. You want that. If, you don't, if your web server crashes, you don't want it holding all the connections open. But it means your job, you can do something at five o'clock one day, nothing happens till nine o'clock the next morning, and then suddenly your jobs will break because your MySQL connection is broken. MySQL I can sort this out for you if you're using that. There's one config value, reconnect, and apparently, if you use that, uh, the moment it detects an error will reconnect for you. PDO, on the other hand, not so good. You need, it throws an exception, but you need to catch it on the PDO object. If you've got a PDO statement object, you have to catch it again, and you have to rebuild that object. You can't just tell it to reconnect. You have to try and grab what you thought the query was and try it again, and it still prints a warning. So you get an exception and a warning for one error. That's been a bug open since 2012, and they've done nothing about it. So our logs are full of that. The same thing happens with Swift Mailer, which we use for sending email. SMTP servers boot you up after eight hours. <coughs> and Swift Mailer, you've got a nice little exception. You can catch it, and if you say, stop the transport, Swift Mailer will reconnect for you automatically. But you get these, just little F write, buffer, broken pipe. They happen. And the solution from Swift Mailer is just reconnect each time. So if we're sending 200,000 emails, I don't want to reconnect to the SMTP server 200,000 times. Um, that's the thing I've been trying to avoid doing by using this. So I'm not super happy with that solution. It's one of the big problems with using PHP for these kind of things. The libraries are not designed to be connected for this length of time. Ones in other programming languages are a bit more uh, helpful. So what we do, supervisor restarts things if they crash. So if we think the SMTP server is on the blink, or our connection is dodgy, we just say exit, supervisor notices, and boots the PHP process back up to pick up the job again. Right, summary, Beanstalk, easy to use, easy to set up job server. It's a single C binary, uh, very, no, very few dependencies. You can break apart a complicated application into small independent tasks, and you can use it for scale by adding more and more workers. Supervisor is essential for running these things. It's very stable itself. It allows you to spot crashes. You can see how many things are running. Uh, PHP is iffy, but generally most things work pretty well. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Yeah, that's the summary of PHP in general, isn't it? <laughs> sure. Have you had any problems with Beanstalk losing data? I don't think so, but <laughs> 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 if it had been and I haven't noticed, then yes, I have. I've not a really useful answer, but um, have you, is that something you've been dealing with? No, we haven't used it yet. Okay. Um, no, I think it's been very, very stable. We've not. If there's been issues, it's been our application not putting the jobs in Beanstalk. Um, it, very easy to connect to, so you can have lots of monitoring on it if you're worried about that. Anybody else? Right, thanks very much. Oh, sorry. Sorry. What happens to a message if the PHP cannot explicitly query it or declare it? Uh... Um, so if you reserve a job from Beanstalk and then immediately crash, you don't say delete it, you don't say bury it, Beanstalk notices that you've gone away and will hand off the job to another worker when it comes online. Thank you very much.